This video is a tutorial on identifying cross-site request forgery flaws in Java Spring applications. Now that we are familiar with cross-site request forgery, or CSERF, it is time to identify the vulnerability in source code as well as a running application. When reviewing Java Spring source, it is quickly evident if an application does not currently implement CSERF protections. By default, Java Spring enables CSERF tokens as a protection against these attacks for HTTP POST, PUT, and DELETE methods. However, if we look in the Java configuration of MoneyX within securityconfiguration.java, we find that these protections have been disabled. A quick check of the different controllers also shows no custom CSERF implementation or checks that would protect users against this flaw. In this case, looking at the profile update function that changes user information, the user model is updated based on the username as long as each parameter has a value. Let's verify the vulnerability in the running instance of MoneyX using a proxy, although we could craft the attack from pure HTML. Browse to the user profile page and update the first name field. We are currently pushing MoneyX traffic through the Burp Suite proxy, so we will use that to create a proof of concept. Notice how application traffic normally uses only HTTP GET requests but anything that changes application state is done with a post, such as login or update profile. The profile update post we just performed is used to craft a new attack. Update the piece of information you wish to change that will allow for the takeover of this user's account. Email address is usually a safe bet. Load the attack page in the browser where the user has already authenticated to MoneyX. Click Submit Request, and you'll see that the application redirects our current page to one that shows success. If we were crafting a real attack, we would not allow the request to redirect. At this point, we have successfully executed a CSERF attack against MoneyX. The next module will discuss mitigation techniques for this vulnerability. This concludes the tutorial on identifying cross-site request forgery flaws in Java Spring applications.